All right, it's the day after Christmas, and we're going to uh, start on another project here. Uh, I call this project the Twins. Uh, here's a drop octagon clock. It's a calendar clock. And here's another one that's almost identical. Uh, so we're going to be approaching these. These are a time only. Uh, looks like they must both be Gilberts. Uh, time only calendar clocks. And that's where we're starting. My poor little clock shop down here is pretty crowded. Uh, it gets jammed up in the winter time because my pond stuff all of my my uh, tropical plants and box turtles have to come down here so the box turtles are kept over there in a couple of tanks or, and uh, for the winter time this year I'm also having to house a little Florida cooter so anyway the tropical plants have to stay in here I've got uh, LED grow lights that uh, are uh, keeping the plants healthy and uh, anyway we're going to be working on these twins I've already taken the movement out of this one and put it over here so we'll take a look at it anyway it's a time only I've already taken the uh, suspension spring off and uh, looks like it's uh, not in too bad a shape I kind of take a look at it uh, when I move I don't see any movement in pivots Maybe a little one in the second wheel right here. I see that one. Little movement in the second wheel. Other than that, so we'll probably bush this one. Be the only bushing that this one requires. Otherwise, this needs to be taken down, cleaned properly, put back together. I'll be ready to go. I need to. Take a little closer look here. Let me get my magnifying glasses out here. Lantern pinions. I don't see anything there that uh, we have to worry about. A little bit too much oil on things. A lot of dirt, but uh, not bad. So we'll take a look at this. So we one. have a let down key and we have a capture ring for the spring the first thing we want to do is wind this up and I got to determine looks like it might be a number five let's see no nope, a little bigger than a five how about a six yep six is it just make sure we've got a good click on here. That looks good. Okay. Right. Oh. Uh. Okay. Put the ring in there. And we will put the key on. And we'll start to let this down. Okay, there we go. All right, spring all let down. Okay, once the spring is down, we can take the uh, 
scratch and strip anchor, strip, strip pallet off, and then uh, take these out. is comprised no, this is the uh, calendar wheel behind here so we've got to take the front plate off less oil. Man, this thing is really oily. Oh well. I'll first wipe all this off because I don't need to be throwing all that oil into my cleaning solution. So I'll wipe all the excess off. into the ultrasonic I've got to let I've got to let this spring down so this is gonna have to go back now to my spring winder This loop is going on here. This pivot is going into this spot here. And then the winding arbor is going into the key from the letdown set. We tighten that down and now that can be unwound. The way we do that is we got to wind it up first. Okay. 
tightening. Take this off. Now we gotta flip the lever. And we can now let this back down. Just keep your face out of the way. Besides let go, it's gonna throw fling them straight out. The spring now, main wheel, and we have all these parts now that need to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. We have parts in the basket, cover on, hit start, and we'll let it clean for 15 minutes. It's a little crowded in here. Okay, now we'll take these in and we'll rinse them in hot water and then do that in the utility sink and then I'll dry them off. Let's get the grease off of them. There's still a lot of tarnish on here, but it's getting pretty clean. If we get them all cleaned up, we'll take each of the wheels and we'll put them in the lathe and we'll polish pivots. Once the pivots are polished, put the wheels back between the plates, and recheck the recheck the uh, pivot holes. See which ones are worn and which ones aren't. It's so heavily stained. Quadruple lot steel wool. Take the mass of that off. I just need to get this clean. I don't like it a little bit stained on there. Somebody pounded on this thing. Plates are bent in several places, so I'm going to have to get that straightened out, too. Yeah, I can see the, see the bend here. I don't know if you see that. But that's bent. I don't want to cause that. Anyway, well, get that straightened out. You like stuff like that, that just looks horrible. I mean, ultrasonic took the, the gunk off, but there's still this heavy, heavy staining and tarnish on here that
Okay, first cleaning. Well, the one that's not in here is the escape gear. I have to just still clean that one up. But I want to put these gears back in here so that I can now check them for wear. See where I need. I think the only one I needed to look at was the second wheel. We got all the pivots polished. And we got the arbors cleaned up, got the rust off of them. Uh, so everything's looking pretty good. Okay, the only one I can see here is the second wheel. Let's see how much that flops around. That needs to be rebushed. <laughs>
Okay, first one done. January 1st, 2018. And here we are with the second one. This one looks like it might have the original dial on it. A little water stained. Calendar hand is faded. One and the other one was a reproduction. It was definitely made out of aluminum. Okay, we'll get this one apart. Let's take the hands and dial off. And we'll see what the movement looks like in here. Okay, well, this movement doesn't really look even all that dirty. Well, I'll take it out and take a look at it. Okay. Let's take out the suspension spring. Usually these will slide out. Okay. Let's take a look at the wear, if anything. Third and fourth wheels got some play in them. We'll be putting some bushings in those. And on the back is where I would expect to see more. Fourth wheel and escape wheel, definitely. Eh, probably three or four more bushings in this one. So, first thing to do is to get this. Uh, Let's see if I got a key here. I gotta get some more keys. Okay, we're gonna get this wound up enough that we can get a restrainer on it. Down key number five, number six. Okay, we're going to you see here's the click right here. Okay, and uh, what we can do is we can unhook the click spring. Bring the click out of the way, and then we just let that slide through the hand. I get this clip up there where it belongs. Okay. All right, spring is safely let down. Once we get this spring let down, then we can take the crutch off and uh, take a look real quick. Uh, a little bit of wear, not too bad. Not too bad. Hey, well, let's get a little pan for parts. See what we can do here. First thing we got to do is loosen the nuts. escape wheel so we're if we're careful we can take this out without getting everything open 
tight. Ooh, boy, how come those are so tight? Don't want to slip off the pillars. Mm. Mm, there we go. Alright, make sure that gets disconnected. And slide this off. And there's our movement. Of course, this is these two gears are for the calendar hand. And there's a little clip here that engages those teeth. Anyway, there's that this little clip here. There's a a little pin on this gear that turns once every 24 hours and that pushes on this toothed wheel here and advances the calendar once a day so it pushes on that and you can see then 24 hours later goes to the next one so when we put this back together, we want to make sure that we turn the hand until we see that change date, and then we put the hands on at midnight so that it changes around midnight. It takes a, it takes a while when it's running for it to actually change, probably about an hour, and uh, we'll click to the next date. Anyway, that's what we do with that. That'll come apart. And here are the parts of this movement. It's just exactly like the other one. We've got an escape wheel. And we got another couple here that are in that train. And this is the motion works. This is the intermediate gear that gears down a ratio of 1 to 12 so that we every rotation of this makes or every 12 rotations of the minute hand makes this turn once. So ooh, that's really gummy. Really stick thick gunky stuff on it. So those come off. This is the hour pipe. The hour hand goes on that one. Then the minute hand goes on the end of this one. There are the two gears then that are involved in with this one that uh, keep the hours and minutes run. Okay, and we slide the How about that nasty mess up? Anyway, we're going to put this stuff into ultrasonic cleaner here in a short. As soon as I wipe the oil off of this, and as soon as I let this uh, let this spring down, I'll let the spring down. We got to go use our spring winder. Okay, a different view of the spring winder. Uh, was asking me about these. Things wondered about this. This can be turned around this way, uh, or it can be turned this way. This is what we need for the loop end type of springs, because that's where we're going to put the loop. And I'm going to take our letdown key, and we need the number six key sticking out. So we put that in there. the loop on here. Put that in the arbor end of the key end, maybe, till that's held between centers. Crank it up. All right, now, re-hook up the spring. And, and we're simply going to wind this spring Keep your face out from the front of it. Until we can take the clip off. And then we have to reverse the direction of the 
ratchet. And then we let this one come down. And we have now let all of the power out of that spring. We undo this, slide that loose, take that out of the key, take the loop off, and there's our spring. Now I gotta do is take it off the wheel, ready to put everything into the into the bath. Oh, there we go. Turn it backwards and then finally we got it. All right, now we get the spring off, all this oil and junk off. And we'll throw everything into the into the uh, ultrasonic cleaner for a bit. Here are the parts. All partially cleaned. And now what we got to do is we got to wipe everything off and uh, let's see how bad things are okay and uh, rust look at the lantern pinions make sure we don't have any worn trundles And then the next step is to, we'll take each one of these and we'll put them into the lathe. And we'll do some pivot polishing. And then we'll put the wheels back into the, between the plates and recheck for wear. Let's see what kind of... kind of uh, bushings we're going to have to put in. Takes care of that. And I bet that goes through there a lot better. Yeah, sure does. Inside the power pipe. Uh, a few more Q tips. Okay.
Okay, we got the wheels back in. Everything really runs fairly smoothly. Problem is, don't like that second wheel. The second wheel is kind of, as is the third. Actually, the whole front of this. It's kind of sloppy. See what the back looks like. Second wheel, too. Them out. Okay, so there's seven bushings basically that need to be done on this one. The center wheel on the back. Um, center wheel's flopping pretty good. Uh, third wheel looks pretty good. Fourth wheel definitely. That moves pretty good. One, two, three on this side. And then two, three on this side. One, two, three on this side. One, two, three on this side. Six, six bushings. Okay, so we take it apart now and uh, rebush. Okay. Right, what I did was I measured the pivots on the two ends of the second wheel. The front pivot is 1.62 millimeters. The back pivot is 1.5 millimeters. So both of these can be handled with these bushings. The diameter of the uh, bore on these is one and a half. So I can uh, use one directly on the back and then roach out the one on the front to meet the 1.62 hole. And they both take, uh, they're both, uh, then will be three and a half millimeters. So I need a reamer like this. This reamer is uh, uh, 3.47. So we'll use that to cut the holes out and then press in the bushings go from there. Okay. That hole has been reamed out now to 3.47 as has that one. And now we will press in or tap in a bushing on each one of those. And what we'll do before we put the pushing in as well. Chamfer the hole just a little bit. It allows the bushing to go in there a lot easier. Chamfer both of those holes. With a little chamfering tool. And I get a bushing. upside down.
Okay. So well, now we have bushings in there. So now what I have to do is get a brooch and brooch it out. So this is the front plate. And this pivot has to go into that bush and uh, we'll get the brooch. Okay, I've chosen a brooch that fits the hole, goes through, and then I am broaching this out until this pivot goes in that hole. It's not quite there. Just try to keep this square to the plate. Almost. Let's go from the front side. fit now. So we go in, we turn just a tiny bit more. And okay. Go from the front side. Just do a very small amount. Okay, and that's what we want. Well, a little bit of play, but not much. Okay, and it's got it. Okay, now the next step then is to uh, use a smooth brooch on that and. Uh, smooth it up. So we'll get that after we rough broach this back one and that's going to be this pivot going into this hole and it doesn't fit right now. So we have to go in here and return with that same broach. Not quite there. For this one, just going to put a tiny bit of oil on it. And we will use this brooch in here. And what it will do is it will smooth out what we just cut and it will also work hard in that brass bushing and uh, make that just a much smoother operation. Good. Okay, we do the same on the other one. 
here. And here. And we will do the other plate the same way. Approach it. Go to the other side. Approach it. up and that there's no binding. So that's going to be that side. This is going to go on this side. Like so. And we just see that that spins just fine. Could put the nuts back on. And we also want to make sure when this is tight, there's a little bit of end shake. That means it moves just ever so slightly back and forth between the plates so that there's going to be no binding. Okay, and that spins freely. And there won't be any play in that that bush where they would put that bushing in now. There's no play at all. I mean, not flopping around. So those two bushings are done. We'll move on to the others and do the same thing to the others. Okay. This bushing might cause us some trouble because it's been bushed before. See that's this one right here. And I don't know if we can see that or not. Let's see. This one here. You can see the old bushing that's in there. I don't know how well that's gonna work. It was uh, pretty roughly done. So I'm not sure how well that's going to come out. So depends on what the size is in there. We'll have to maybe make a custom one on this. Actually, it worked out okay. I cut it out with the uh, three and a half millimeter, 3.47 millimeter reamer, pressed it in, and uh, <laughs> took very little to make this fit almost just absolutely perfectly. So that worked out all right. <clears throat> okay, time to put this back in. <clears throat> you know, I know which way the Spring goes on and look at the the spring hook on the arbor and you know it's got to turn that way also the click spring you know it's got to turn that way so then you got to look at the center of the spring see which way the hook the hook is in there it goes that way it goes on this side there and then when we turn that okay now to rewind this again we got to use a spring winder okay. there's our spring winder we got to take the wind the letdown key take the key out of it and we'll put it in here now Oop, is going over there. Spring is going in here into the key winder. Into the 
put down key. And now we're going to put this all the way in. Until it's tight. And then we're going to, next thing we're going to do is we're going to lubricate this spring and then we're going to crank it up and down a couple of times. lubricant on this in this uh, okay I need to get a little more okay and then what we'll do is we'll just use this brush to put some on each side of the spring And then as we crank it up and down, we'll get it spread all over the whole spring. Again, it up and I'll reverse I'm going to let it back down again at least a few turns I have to go all the way just enough to let the this again and we're going to let this come back down holding the clamp on and now we've spring captured again and uh, can be put back into the movement and wipe the edges off and excess oil oh, I think we did a good job on that again this is the side we want on here when we do a loop spring when we do a barrel spring I'm going to put this side on because that gives us a little more room here to take a barrel off when we do a barrel spring. So this just flips around and goes on there either way. All right, the next thing we have to do, we have to take 
these back out. And now we go in here and use toothpicks. You can use uh, peg wood, buy peg wood if you want. And the idea here is now we we go back to all the pivots and we run a toothpick in each of the pivot holes and you can see there's a little bit of black that gets on it okay now as that collects I just take a, a knife razor knife and I scrape off the gunk but anyway we run through all of these pivot holes make sure there's nothing left inside that could contaminate anything from both sides Okay, what I do now, and I'm already done most time, start putting things back together. There's that little pin right there that runs the calendar wheel. once every 24 hours. It advances that little wheel and that advances the calendar. Now we've got to put a pin on this.
<clears throat> okay. And putting these together usually easiest way is to get get the bottom pillars started and get the nuts started so they don't fall off catching where it's not supposed to be. Hi, Lily. How are you, sweetie? What's going on? What's going on? Remember, the heater is very hot. So yeah, get too cold. it gets too hot. How are you, honey? I'm putting another movement together. Mm. I'm videotaping it. That makes sense. You want to peek down there far enough you can get your face in there. There you go. Yeah, watch out you don't catch Grandpa's cold. I, my nose is running. Alrighty. Okay. Movement is back together. And we have to oil it and we have to look at the suspension spring. up and then I'll be ready to give this a shot and guess what I got to take it back apart because if I got to put the hour hour pipe in okay so we take it apart <laughs> and that's what happens when you're not paying attention Okay, so we take it back apart. Get the and here's what we forgot to do. And what's really bad is that's going to go there, that's going to go there, and this is the one. Then it drives the gear for the calendar. Okay, so back on again. This one in. Uh, okay. Let's try the escape 
gear. Yep, okay, that popped in. Everything's down. Alright. A lot easier when you're younger and younger and you don't have arthritis in your fingers. Makes it a lot easier to maneuver and manipulate. Small parts. Okay. Okay. And then Oil on the two pallets. We got some nice little bugs flying around here that came off the plants. Pension spring. This is going to go in here. On that side. And we'll go right here. Okay. And what I do is I It's gonna run. Well, we gotta go get the pendulum. Oh, 
Okay, this one's been running now for 24 hours and doing quite well. All settled down. Pendulum's got a nice arc to it. So we'll get it back in the case. Got to fix the door on the case when the hinges is loose, but otherwise, this is about ready to go back in. Okay, there is the second of the two. And here is the first of the two. Both done.